you know, pe- privacy advocates have fought for years for strong encryption, uh, which, you know, for the uninitiated generally just means that these these systems are not weakened and they're not backdoored in some way. There's no God keys. Um, and, uh, and businesses have seen some sort of God key as an escape hatch and, a, and an enterprise feature. Mm-hmm. Um, but now they're starting to realize that if, if we have shared mutualized networks and there's a God key and one person gets it and then another person gets it yeah. or a foreign government gets it, uh, it's you know, it's rabbit hole. Yeah, it, it, it's game theory playing out, right? Game theory when I win seems great. Like mm-hmm. this winner take all thing. If I win, great. But actually, if I realize I'm in a community and somebody else could also win, then suddenly I want the rules to be different. Exactly. And so when we, you know, th- this was a lot of the education that I was doing early on was, you know, stop thinking about these peer to peer systems as just Alice to Bob and person to person. Mm-hmm. And we started thinking about them corporate to corporate or bank to bank. But really, it's about sovereign to sovereign. So where are the trust boundaries? Uh, geopolitically globally they you know the, the historically we had these kind of centralized institutions like a trade registry for example yep. it's not that technically we couldn't create a trade registry it's that no one could really agree on what jurisdiction it could sit in absolutely and so you couldn't trade 24 7 because and you couldn't globally form capital mm-hmm. this is um something i've been passionate about for some time is that as uh, somebody starting a project or a company in uh, sub-saharan africa and in indonesia uh, i can't access a global investor base i can access a local one if i happen to be in silicon valley great i've got a lot of investors in my back door and my valuation is 10x what it would be in another city somewhere else in the world just because of the amount of capital that i'm near granted there's an agglomeration effect piece there where there's a lot of talent and there's a lot of capital and there's a lot of uh, former founders who can help you and so on and so on. But actually, to get to the value of truly globalized trade, you have to find a way to deal with that fundamental problem, which is how on earth do I form capital and move capital globally and deal with the geopolitical issue at the same time? And maybe that gives us a way to start to do that if... We all play by that same set of rules, but you have to have that fractalization of the network. You have to have an ability for the rules to be one thing over here, something else over here, but still compatible at the higher level. That's a really interesting question. Um, Preston Byrne, for all he's uh, lauded and uh, hated, uh, he did often talk about Ethereum being a spine to a network of potential uh, permission chains in 2014, bless him. And I think that idea of is not wrong like it's 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 where we're heading but what shape it takes is going to be interesting to see yeah and um, being peer-to-peer government to government is one thing but what happens when uh, consumers and and you know regular people as consumers are in their daily lives um, actually uh, are on public chains doing things their daily activity or you get you know Airbnb of the blockchain what have you and then uh, other corporates and institutions want to have access to that kind of information hmm. uh, so it's it's just a matter of time before these corporate consortiums decide that they also need to reach out to public chain as well to access information there. Um, Whether that's cross-chain asset trading or not might happen later. Uh, But simply accessing that information right now would require a vast rewrite of your system or moving to something else.